This is the first in a series of MakerPlot videos that will show you how to build your own interfaces. Once again, an interface is a screen, usually with a plot area and meters, buttons, switches, text boxes, and other controls as we call them. The interfaces you see here are all built with these controls, and you can see the variety of designs that are available to you just off the shelf. So beginning with this first video, I'm going to show you what's behind the construction of these interfaces and how you can begin to build your own. So to begin, let's select the standard interface. Now the standard interface is a good place to start to build a custom interface of your own. As you can see, it has a large plot area that covers the top part of the interface, and below it there are menu controls to manipulate the plotted area. What it doesn't have at the moment are meters or other controls that are normally on the right-hand side. This is what we want to eventually add to show you how to begin to build things like this. And we'll also get into how the menu controls work when you click them. So there's really a lot to cover. But every journey starts with a few purposeful steps. So let's start with the basics and move through the more involved steps as we go. Now, rather than start from scratch to build our own interface, the standard interface has most of the controls we want anyway for a custom interface. So we're going to modify it rather than start with a blank slate. But before we modify it, let's save it to another file name so that we can edit our own creation without affecting the standard interface macro in the process. To do this, let's click on the macro builder icon. It's the one that looks like a wrench right here. We'll get much more into the macro builder as we proceed through creating our own interfaces, but this will introduce you to it. And by the way, the interfaces that come with MakerPlot are all built with what we call macros. Now, macros are simply text files that use MakerPlot instructions to place controls on the interface screen, as well as other MakerPlot instructions that actually make them work to do what we want them to do sort of like instructions for your micro. Now you can build interfaces without these macros, like sending the same instructions one by one directly from your micro to MakerPlot to create the same interfaces, but we'll get into that in a later video. For now, just know that macros are like a program that makes MakerPlot do what you want it to do. Okay, let's click on the down arrow next to the save icon and do a save as to another file name. That's right here. We'll click on Save As. And notice that we already have a series of folders under our MakerPlot folder in our My Documents folder. So we want to go to the My Documents folder first and create a series of folders that you see here. One is Data, another one is Macros, third one is Plots, a fourth one is Snapshots, and a fifth Templates. So do these first. Now once you have these constructed, go to the Macros folder, click on it. There's nothing there right now, so we want to enter our new file name for our standard interface that's going to be, let's call it My Interface. So we're going to call it My Interface. And let's do an my underscore interface. And the program will automatically append the .spm extension to it, which stands for our, our macro. So we'll save that. Okay, then we're asked a question. The path of the file may have changed. Would you like to rebuild the object macro to update paths? And we'll answer yes to that. Okay, now we have an interface under our name, My Interface. So we can now begin to construct our macro under my interface and not really affect the standard interface whatsoever. So let's drop the macro builder for now. And let's go to another icon that's important to macro building. And that is our object editor. And this is where we can create our objects, which are the text boxes, the switches, the buttons, the meters, and so forth, directly on our interface screen. The first thing we want to do is come down here and set our plot percent. Right now the plot percent is set to 180. And that means 
in our X direction, our plot area is 100% in the X direction and 80% in the Y direction. And the 80% in the Y direction gives us the space for all of the controls for our menu items. So now we want to adjust this so that we can create some space on the right hand side of our plot area. So let's come down here and click in the value of 80. So we'll have 80 and 80 and let's click the set button. Okay, now we notice that our plot area has shrunk to allow some space on the right hand side. And that space on the right hand side is what we're going to use for our meters, buttons, toggle switches, and other objects that we place on this area. Also notice that the background area is kind of a dark maroon or dark red color. Let's start by changing that. Let's come down here to this drop down menu and select O back, which is object background. We want to also come here and click on Media and Color, then come down here to the various color choices that we have, and let's pick a color choice out of the area. Let's pick something like red. Just kind of grab that and move it over to here, and all of a sudden our background is now a bright red. Do the same thing with yellow. Grab yellow and move it over here, and now our background is a bright yellow. We can also come down here to our Backs folder, click on this, and now we can click on our background JPEG, bring it over, and now we have a much different background, which is really a JPEG type image that's now a part of our background. We can select various other backgrounds, like this copper one. Let's bring it and pull it over. Now we have a copper background. Let's pick gold. Now we have a gold background. The gold background looks pretty good, so let's stick with the gold background for the rest of our interface. So now we have an interface with a shrunken plot area, if you will. It's an 80 by 80% 80 of the screen plot area. And then we have some space here on the right hand side for our controls that we'll add later. Okay, now we're not done yet. Let's unclick the object editor, come back here and click on the macro builder. Then one more time we're going to click on our wrench icon, and this time the wrench icon is inside the drop down menu. Then simply come here and click the save. We're going to save our macro. Now we've saved it to our My Interfaces. And to test this macro out, let's click on the stoplight key, and that is it says run current macro and be sure to save first. Yes, we did, so let's click on it. And then it says macro to run, and it gives us the path name for our macro, which is myinterface.spm. Be sure you've saved your build first. Yes, we have. And let's click yes. OK. Now here is our new macro beginning to be built. So this winds up the first video in our Maker series, and that is what we've done with this video is we have shown you how to shrink the plot area to make room for a right-hand side where we're going to place some controls. And we've also changed the background color from the dark red or maroon to a nice gold color that will really distinguish it from all the other macros that you see in MakerPlot. So this is going to be our interface that we're going to use for subsequent videos that will follow on by creating buttons, switches, meters, and so forth.